You want to know how many people have this tattoo now? A lot. Hundreds of thousands of people. It can't be that many. Okay. Oh, it can be. Oh, it can't be. Hundreds. I'm glad they like it. I like the lady that's famous for having the Tamlin tattoo. Oh, my God. She has no... (laughs) She's so fucking funny. Um, (laughs) I I love that. What a... I just want to say... I need to say something kind. When I saw that, I'm like, is she trolling us? I don't think she was. I think she read the first book of a five book series and got a tattoo and got a fucking tattoo on her. Yeah, wow. I so too. She's like, I'm gonna love Tamlin forever. <laughs> I love you, Tamlin. You're so handsome and blonde and she's, strong. She's, she did one that was like, where do I put Dane? Like <laughs> she, she did. Yeah. Oh, that's. I'm glad she understands now. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, she set herself up for life, and she's an author too. I, it, she did a pod or a TikTok, sorry, where she was she she was reading Mist and Fury and like her response to Mist and Fury. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like cross that shit out. I think he's gonna get a redemption arc. I think so too. I Mark think, my words. I hope so. I want it for him. I'm okay with that now. Yeah, he's getting a enough time arc. has passed <laughs> since my yeah betrayal. Speaking feelings. of redemption arcs, we're in Iron Flame now, right? Yeah, we are. Oh, hey, I'm Kate. And I'm Rachel. And I'm Hannah. And this is Feast, Feast Sheath. And shut <laughs> up. Is it hot in here or is it just me? Tuning in to hear these three chatting about fantasy. Novels of the spicy variety. Not your average book club if you know what I mean. Are you happy to see us? Or is that a dagger? It's Feast Okay, go. I just ready to talk. I know you are, and I'm ready to hear you talk. So go. I want to listen to you talk. You go. No, you're the one who has all the feel. I mean, I uh, have feelings. Yes. You're the one that <laughs> you're feels the one so with much. All the feelings. <laughs> you're the one with all the feelings. Um, we're in Iron Flame. Congrats. Yeah. We read Iron Flame too. Now, mm-hmm. just collectively, one out of ten. No, let's not. Let's not do that. I don't like. <laughs> I don't like spec. I don't like the. Yeah. What did you like Iron Flame? Eh. 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 I it was just not as I was so excited about it because I liked we Fourth were Wing so, so much. Excited. So yeah. perspective expectations were high. Yes, April fifth to eleven seven, Fourth Wing took off in a way that no one saw coming, including the publisher Red Tower. Mm-hmm. They rushed the fuck out of this book. Yes, it was not edited. I feel like they handed it to an editor, and that editor was like, don't tell them, but I didn't read chapters <laughs> two through the last one. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It was mm, yeah. rushed. It was, I hope it was a lesson, even though I know financially it was a gift for them. Yeah. They were not expecting a book to do this well. They are not prepared for it. So let's go into a little bit of the drama. Hey, like, first, though, let's just say we are not a fan cast. If you are looking for an episode that is nothing but good things about this book, we all love it, but that's not that's not who we are. That's not yeah. why we're here. Uh, we're not a fan cast. So we're going to put a podcast in the notes that is a fan cast, if that is what you're looking for. Tutu, tutu. Tutu. I was going to say TTRL. We'll talk to you later. We'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Um, uh, Also, spoiler warning, we're going to talk about everything that has to do with Iron Flame and Fourth Wing. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's where we're at. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about all the, there was a lot of drama going into this book. So they did a lot of things. Red Tower, Fourth Wing is a fucking phenomenal success. No one sees it coming. Mm-hmm. I mean, it hit pop culture in a way that, like, was it was a massive book. Yeah. Red Tower rushes out the next one in seven months. Uh, just a couple little things that happened. Yaros got in a lot of, Rebecca Yaros got in a lot of, um, she, got, she took a lot of heat for her stances on, some of the political stuff that's happening right now, some of the, uh, basically her stance. I don't, do you want me to? Political stuff that's happening right now. It's okay? Yeah. Okay. If you want to, it's fine. It's just, it's fine if you want to. She made some comments that I think she thought were going to be received really, really well. 
And I don't know if she had enough scope to yeah. understand the ramifications of what she was saying. Right. Um, she also they put out um, they put out a special sprayed edged version of this on Amazon. And then there was a secret release book to also buy. And it just got out right, like the via TikTok and the Discord servers and the rit- Ritalin. Reddit. Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> Ritalin's fine. Yeah. yeah it works for and that. Ritalin, yeah. Uh, which I, is what I call Reddit. Um, <laughs> it just blew up. So mm-hmm. everybody's ordering all these books. I ordered both copies. We didn't know what the other book was going to be. Ends up being another version of Fourth Wing that matches Iron Flame, has a chapter with Zayden's POV in it, which I have. I don't know if y'all have read it. Um, Another thing that happened is she got a lot of flack for her pronunciation of words and for her taking – this is from the Gaelic language, which is different than Gaelic, um, and just not having the sensitivity that you have when you take words that already exist from a – minority language is that how you would have said that yeah so there was a lot of heat going on and that's what happens when you get really big really fast really fast too fast too fast you don't have you rush a book yeah you don't have the support you don't have the therapy you don't have a publicist you don't have this you don't <laughs> right you don't have a publicist you don't yeah. have she's not working with that harper collins let's go over what your interview is going to be like yeah before I send she you is out there. not working with bloomsbury no so let's talk about the fucking drama that happened the week before the week that before. this comes out so it, kate calls me crying <laughs> <laughs> basically like it i was so mad we're so this book is so anticipated it's so, crazy yeah. that we're getting it so soon right that we're coming off fourth wing. People are reading it like people who don't read are reading it. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. great. Books that are that accessible are magic. I love books like that. And um, so they fucking is it's sitting in the back stock at Target and Walmart. Yeah. And they <laughs> don't get make enough money to not put that shit on the shelves early. Right. So we're supposed to get, I think it was a Tuesday release. What day was 7th? 7th. I think it was a Tuesday. So we're supposed to get a Tuesday release and that stuff hits starts hitting TikTok. I got my I got my copy at Walmart. They put it out on the shelves like Thursday before Sunday. that. It was a Sunday. So oh. it wasn't that long, but it was long enough to where people were getting their hands on copies. Can you imagine Harry Potter? Is that what you Can you're yeah. yeah. Can you imagine if you got the Harry Potter Harry Potter 7? Two days before no, the release, I would someone w- would would riot. have. I mean, <laughs> I would. I would have sh- burned this whole world would- <laughs> down to the ground. <laughs> I remember. I mean, by the time, uh, so I stood in line for my first Harry Potter book for book four. When I started reading Harry Potter, there were only three books. My mom was a middle school librarian, so I feel like I caught on really early. Mm-hmm. And so my first line was at Barnes and Noble for book four. So I think it was Goblet of Fire. Mm-hmm. And um, I waited, I think oh, it was, might have been 16 or 17, I don't remember, but I waited in line, right? So by the time s- the seventh book came out, I knew that I could go out to the bars and get shit-faced and then hit <laughs> up the Walmart at 3 a.m., pick up a copy, go home and start reading it. Like, yeah. that was the where that hit me yeah. in my life, right? It was definitely a journey from one to the other. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I would have rioted, and I don't, and it may be. That we just didn't have access to information the way we do now. Sure. Like it was coming out early. Yeah. Like maybe mm. some people did get copies and we just didn't know because we didn't it. have TikTok and Ritalin. And, Harry uh, Potter was like under a lock and Bloomsbury key. knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, they doing. know what, yeah. They, what to do. This was like. They know what they're doing and they don't. Like we had a publishing company and. We were like, <laughs> yeah. how would we do it? <laughs> yeah. And so I went to like three Walmarts. I t- tr- tried to fill my mom in on what was going on. And she goes, how many Walmarts do we have to go to? And I'm like, just all the ones in a 25 mile radius. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, mom. And they just weren't all out. the ones. But like watching people, hit, it was like finding special Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. It was so cool to watch. I was a little bit butthurt, but I was also excited for the people it was happening to but i just all i could think was none of this would have happened if she was with a publisher that was prepared for this kind of success Mm -hmm. yeah like level up 
Yeah, I know when I worked at a bookstore, if it was a big release, we would get them in like a separate shipment and it would have it would be like taped off and it's like don't even open it. And there was somebody day. in charge at your store that understood the ramifications yeah. of opening those books early. But if it was a small release, like a like a independent publisher or a small publisher or whatever, you'd get them in the regular shipment and you had to like look for them and right. pull them out. Mm-hmm. Right. And I this this just got too big for its britches really really fast. Yeah, so it was they weren't they weren't set up to be the publisher they weren't set up to be the one that sends out the special shipment they were like it's in the box just make sure you pull it out Mm -hmm. right yeah and they it shows it shows in the writing it shows in the story it shows in the length it shows in the pacing yeah and i will continue to love these the story and i will continue to read it um but like i said in the last pod that we did 15 minutes ago um (laughs) i would rather watch it on tv because yeah. you wrote it to be on TV. Yeah, she really did. Yeah. I wanted to ask you how you liked the narrator on Audible. I thought she was okay. She's and then okay. I read a ton of horrible reviews of her. She's, okay, so she like like I said, like like I think this is just a theme. Yeah. I think they picked up a narrator mm-hmm. who I mean, she's not Elizabeth Evans. No, no one is Elizabeth Evans. No. <laughs> No one is <laughs> Elizabeth Evans does like one Instagram post and it's always like a year. I mean, she's out there living a real life. Yeah. Right. She's not living my life on the Instagram and the TikTok <laughs> 14 hours a day. Right. She ain't logging the time like me. <laughs> but it's literally just the House of Sky and Breath. I mean, House of Flame and Shadow. That yeah. was it. That, and last year it was Sky and Breath. Mm-hmm. And anyways, praise her. Praise. Yeah. One hand up, praise. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think she was okay. I think that there's this, it bums me out and it might be a me thing, but there is a lot of feminine narrators. If they're v- uh, octave, it's like Rachel would sound like a mature person mm-hmm. yeah, because of the range of your vocal cords. I would sound like a child, which is why I'm not a, a book narrator. <laughs> and I think that that narrator's voice made like y- made her younger. I mm. needed her to be a 21, 20, 21, 22 year old, basically in grad school. Yeah. And um, it definitely, she definitely sounded young. So I could see why people would feel like that. I had no problem with this audiobook. Yeah, I mean, I we've heard much worse. I don't like the guy that was chosen for um, Zayden because Ugh. that's the guy that did Haunting and Hunting Adeline. Oh, mm. and so I've for not. me, he's I, like I know I've heard his voice before. Teddy Hamilton, I think his name is something Teddy. But for me, he he represents this like I wasn't ready to jump into that dark of a romance book, and it was like I couldn't believe. So I. For me, he feels <clears> – <throat> but I know for a lot of people, they really, really love his voice. So – but it's only like one chapter. Yeah. Um, Rachel and I were talking before the pod – or actually, that was all three of us. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Hannah. I forgettable. Just don't, you're not, not forgettable. No. At all. You're not not forgettable. You're not, you're not, not, not <laughs> forgettable. No. Uh, I, I said it's episodic, and I named all the episodes. <laughs> Yes. Which I loved because it was very accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to read them because there's like 14 of them. I don't know. I think we should get the list out. Okay. Yeah. No, please do because it will guide us through this book. Yeah. Yeah. We have a list of episodes. We got to talk about it episode by episode like we watched a series Mm -hmm. and we're going to like break it down. Yeah. Um, Oh, it was exhausting, this book. I can tell I didn't like this book because it doesn't have a shape now that you guys know what that means. Mm -hmm. Because the narrative had no shape. It had no consist. It didn't flow from one so thing to the next. So it was absolutely two books squished together. When Rachel would text us talking about Varish, so we got a new bad guy. His name is Varish. He was a piece of shit. He was evil from day one. <sighs> Jack mm-hmm. Barlow V two, which we learned, which we learn now that if we think they're a fucking evil piece of shit, it's because they're venom. Yeah. So well, at least now we got that. So, so we got that. So right off the bat. Rebecca Yaris does this thing where, and when I listen to her talk, she speaks really fast. Like, she's a very quick, fire signy person to mm-hmm. me. 
And so I understand why she writes her story. You got a question? Here's an answer. Here's a question. Here's an answer. But there's also all these other fucking questions. Here's a question. Here's an answer. Here's three more questions. Here's one answer. Right? So it feels like we're always going forward and back, which I think is part of a story. Yeah. Um, but the pacing of the plot, again, again, it's so episodic that it just felt like I have a friend who reads this. Who was like super into it. She loves, 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 loves it. She's she's always into the theories and like sending them over. And um, she's like, she's so intentional. I know this isn't accidental. And I'm like, girl, I don't have that trust. Mm -mm. I do not have that trust. Mm -mm. Me. She tied more back to fourth wing than I thought she would. But it really kind of felt like, ooh, I I, I did that thing. I could probably loop that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do think that if she, I think these are a really good story and i think if with the with a really smart editor yeah who has been doing this a really long time yeah and the time it takes to make the revisions that it it takes to make a good book to make a good book this could have been fantastic look yeah. at the timeline we get for television shows now yeah like last of us isn't going to come out till 2025 because that's how long it yeah. takes because you want a good tv show and i you don't wait for a good and you know TV why show. you know why because what's HBO not going to let happen again? Game of Thrones. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What's that shape look like? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't watch it. So Well, I'm happy for you about Thank that. You. Mm. Thank I read you. the first book and I hated it. I don't. That's not a surprise at all. It's written by a man. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wow, it's a lot of rape. And he, <laughs> yeah. So, wow, yeah. It's a lot of rape. I am so good. I don't yeah. need more well, of that. It's a lot Thanks. of rape. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of rape. Um, But yeah, it. It, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read these, and I, I'm proud of this lady for being able to accomplish something like this. I don't feel like she has the support and the team that she needs to make sure that they are the quality that they deserve to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Yeah. So I'm gonna grab the episodes. So here are the names of the episodes. <laughs> um, I started off with. Uh, reunion. So mm-hmm. we start back right where we left off. Yeah. Literally the moment the after. The moment. She, Brennan is alive. She, her brother has been d- dead in her life since she's 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And her brother is alive. Her she, dad literally died of a broken heart. That we that we know of. Supposedly. Yeah. Supposedly. Um, we immediately get, you know, I think there's 10 other writers out there with them that are our uh, relics. I don't know if we've even said that, but they have tattoos, they're marked ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Their parents were of the rebellion. We're we're in Astoria? Is that the name of his no. hometown village? Mm. Uh Ash River? <laughs> Ash River? Really loved it. Um it's Aylin? Not, Aylin? That's Aylin Galathinius. <laughs> Galathinius? Yeah. <laughs> it, is it called Rowan Town? <laughs> Rowanville. Did Ter- it's Arder Long. Arder Long. Listen, this story would have been improved by some punching in the face. So. <laughs> or a bite of t- a couple bites. Yeah. Um, where is the, it, Tyr- the map? Tyrandor is the where they're from, page. right? I didn't A- write it. Athbian? A-T-H. Uh-uh. That's not it. It's on the left page. Lord. At the bottom. I never looked at this. Arathia. Arathia? Arathia? Aratia, 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 Aratia is how she pronounces it on the book, which could be wrong. Oh, could, you know, yeah, it's like Bes- when you're Beth when you're in a southern Bes- math class. Basquia, Basquia. It's like when you're in a southern math class. That's a ratio. Oh, <laughs> ratio. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I no, I love it. I'm so glad you know that. Thank you. Yeah, because I never had that experience. No, I didn't probably notice. No. Oh. Um, oh, the southern accent. Yeah. yeah. But so there we, you know, and we find out that there is, we really quickly learn there is an entire rebellion actually happening. A whole ass rebellion. That Zayden is Prince Tyrandor. He is the heir of this second area. He lives in a giant castle. Yeah. Uh, this city that they thought was dragon burned and like demolished isn't. And her brother's there and he's been there. Um, for six years. For six years. And to, dad did not know. So he let his whole family think he was gone. Well, we don't know that the dad knew, but the dad did give her that book. Yeah, Which is illegal, true. and she could have died for owning it. We didn't mm-hmm. even mention Jacinia in the first one. That's it's okay. okay. We, 
Oh. Yeah. So people read the book before they listened to that episode, right? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. We talked about our feelings about the book. That's what we're here for. Yeah. yeah. So I immediately thought she made way too big a deal out of this. <laughs> About what, Brennan being alive? No, about her feelings of being betrayed by Zayden, for Zayden not telling her. Like, to me, it makes perfect sense why he couldn't tell her. Right, because you understand that a man that carries that burden, it isn't about her. Right. Yeah. It's not his secret. They all just almost died because he told her one, one thing. Literally thing. one thing. One thing. Yeah. And she let Dane touch her face. And yes, she doesn't have the scope. And she's like, look. Yeah. She's so, so mad. We go from this. It's too long. Too. We go from this pattern in the first book where her whole thing is. Wait, I wrote it down. Where are my notes? Right here. She. I love the sound of the paper. <laughs> um, the first one, in the first book, she's like, I just need you to tell me that you love me because I know you love me. All your actions say you love me. You do this and I know it means you love me. Just tell me you love me. And then, like, I just need you to say it. I just need the verbal affirmation. <laughs> and then she gets betrayed. She feels betrayed. Yeah. And then the next book, it's right on into, I don't trust you. We have no trust. We're nothing. I don't want to sleep with you ever. We're never going to have sex until five months later because I can't God. do it anymore. Yeah, no, sh no, no doo-doo, lady. Like, <laughs> you need to, yeah. So we're, like, watching her mature emotionally. And like I said, it's not fun. It's very annoying. It's first person book. Yeah, it goes on too long. And that long. is not, too long. not just us. I think not. That no, is a very so common. It was, we do not need... The immaturity, the, the YA. This was very yeah, YA. That's why she felt young in this book was like, I get it. I get it. You felt betrayed. That's fine. We mm -hmm. can live in that for like a you chapter. You know what? You know what? I a know this chapter. other character. She she got betrayed too. So she went over to this little cabin in the woods and she painted some walls that she had no right to paint. <laughs> and who knows if they were good or not. And she Those got are a, my favorite memes. She got like, yeah. good job, Feyre. <laughs> like I, I am. I, I don't want to talk about who it's actually. Oh, sorry. yeah. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. You're good. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. But, um, yeah. She got. It took her a couple days. It took her four or five days to come to the realization to process and realize. I okay. Maybe that. Maybe I do understand where he was coming from. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Okay. So you have this boyfriend. Who is the daddiest of all shadow daddies? Mm -hmm. He is carrying a burden and a weight for all of these humans, these people. He is so good at what he does. Mm -hmm. He's f fucking fearless and just amazing guy. And you're mad because he can't tell you other people's secrets. Yeah. Simultaneously, <laughs> you are learning you. <laughs> the impact of the secrets. You know you can't share some of this information with your roommate. Yeah. So we really quickly get into our second episode. Our second episode, which is back to school like nothing happened. <laughs> um, so they they um, they decide really quick. Okay, we've got to get back to school. We don't have much time. She got stabbed. She came back to life. We got to get back to Bes Beskia. Yeah. And um, so they plan that shit out. She knows she's got to have wards. They've learned that Dane can read her mind. Mm -hmm. Right? So he's going to start, Zayden's going to start training her. Now we do know, we learn in this book that Zayden does have a second signet. And this entire time, he can not read minds. He can visualize intention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I kind of want to talk about that because it's really interesting. But it is. that seems so woo-woo to me like, not woo-woo but like it's like rolling an insight check it is like rolling a fucking insight check yeah. right he just gets a natural 20 on all of his insight checks that's all <laughs> yeah 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 or he can take a 10 that's brilliant because sometimes it gets it wrong so yes yeah and so it's not like reading and they do make an appointment he's an intrinsic and he makes a point to say, like, they've killed all the fucking people who know how to do this. Yes. There's a reason why. We don't know why, but there's a reason why that power exists. 
And they've just, this militaristic society has just destroyed all the history and evidence they need to actually win this upcoming war with these yeah. venom who are very much like white walkers. Yes, that's how are I picture they? them. Yeah. Mm. That's how I picture them. <laughs> yeah, they're very much like white walkers. Um, you know, so they get back to school and they go on. They have graduation immediately. They like, yeah. they're reading the death roll. They do a death roll every day. Reading the death roll. Mm -hmm. Zayden Ryerson, well, this is awkward, is literally <laughs> what he says. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, they're there. And is they're this, like. This one I get to talk about how every time I heard Zayden Ryerson, I thought of Ned Ryerson from Groundhog's Day. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Ned, Ned Ryerson. <laughs> And I did <laughs> – when you shared that, I looked at – their names are the same, but it's spelled differently. Yeah. Um, but that's so funny. I knew who you were talking about, but, yeah, that, I love that. <laughs> the insurance <laughs> The insurance sorry. comes in. Every time they said Ryerson, I was like <laughs> – Yes, yeah, that's so funny. God, I, I love I love that connection in your, your picture, in Thanks. your brain. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Like he just, like, pops in. Pops up. Yeah. 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 Well, and when they get back to school, this is the first time – this this is where a lot of my frustration comes from. This is the first glim glimpse of we see Lilith, who is this bad, cold mom who didn't talk to Violet all year. We finally start to see some humanity, and we start to see her veil slipping a little bit mm -hmm. because she. we learn in this book that she made a deal with um, Zayden. Zayden was like, um, I, you... They made a bargain a long time ago. Zayden is responsible for all these kids. And the reason why he's responsible for these kids is because um, that was like a deal they a deal they made. And I forget, yeah. she, I think he just owed her a favor. Yeah. And she recognized that because what we learn is that she fucked fuck this country, fuck this world, fuck Navarre. I w I'm about my kids. Yep. Yeah. And we learned that at the beginning of the book. And then yep. at the end of the book, she lambs. We lose yep. her. We loot, we kill someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, this is why I don't trust because it is it's like, why wouldn't you give us a couple seasons? Give us some time. Yeah. For this to marinate. Mm -hmm. Let this lady, like, let the stakes be a little bit higher than what they were for their mother to yeah. decide. This is my sacrificing moment. We could have gone all the way from here to leaving when she takes everybody and leaves. That could have been a really great first, like, second book. Yeah. Yes. Middle book. We could have expanded everything that yeah. happens in mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Because it really feels like we go back. Okay, this isn't working out. We leave. I really was yes. bummed out with the no knowing reading series where there is more of a long game when it comes to these types of characters that emotional impact is so big. Yeah. And I feel like she really missed the mark. Yeah. Yeah. Because she is a mother. She has, Rebecca Yars has like three children. Yeah. Like th I know this means a lot to her. Mm -hmm. If you're writing a five book series, let's give that a little bit more Time. resonance. Yeah. Let's let it sit. Like, we don't find out that she's actually been working for you guys this whole time. She sees Brennan's alive, which could have been so much more impactful. Yeah. And then three chapters later, she's gone making choices to save the day. But in one book, when you started your book in April and it's November, I just, that's what bummed me out. Yeah. And I, I like the story and I, I reread it the other day and I was very tearful and felt very connected to their mom and was just bummed. That because I could see the potential. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't get its chance really to. So we didn't get the small moments. We never got a moment. Like, imagine the moment. We didn't even get to like really grieve her mother because no. it was like we're in the middle of something because right now. Because the plot is yeah. just constantly going to the next day. And maybe that's what war feels like. But I also feel like there are small moments that in any story that. The small moments connecting to the big moments is what makes something feel, like, irreplaceable. Well, you mm -hmm. need the contrast. Yeah. She does not like know how to scale back down. Like the shawarma moment at the mm -hmm. end of Avengers yeah. 1. She does not know how to scale back down. No. We started fourth wing with fucking death. 
Yeah. 30% of you are going to die. Yeah. And she gave herself nowhere to go. Right. Nowhere to go. So our yeah. stakes are escalating, but we're not taking the time to build the relationships so that the big choices have the emotional resonance that they could have. And I think a fucking decent editor goes, this is great and we need to do more with this. Yeah. The, this book was 14 episodes and we're probably only going to get 10 episodes and 17 episodes and we're only going to get 10 on the Amazon yeah. show. So yeah. it was too meaty. Uh, meaty is not the right word. There was too, it was too much gristle. Yeah. Too yeah. much extra. It was just a lot. It was relentless and it was, it got tiring. Like, okay. I was worn out. I was, it, well, one of the things that I saw a lot of people struggling with, I struggled with. I took off two days of work to read this book. I mean, I read the seventh Harry Potter book in 24 hours. Yes. This book was not readable for me that fast. Mm-hmm. So you can't binge it. You can't no, just you can't sit and binge read it. it. And no. I think a lot of people thought they could binge it. And I, I did see some people successful. I mean, pe- there are people out there that fucking love this shit mm-hmm. and they binged it. And then I also heard the same person say, but I had to go back and read the same scenes over and over. Because I didn't understand what was happening. Yeah. And I think that her magic is bullshit. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck she was talking about. (laughs) I feel like I can figure out exactly where she got most of these ideas from. The ball. The crystal ball. What is it called? Her siphon. Her siphon. No. No. Um, Our, um. It's the thing that. God, if you hadn't said it, I would have known what it was. Does it start with a C? Uh, that's yeah. what I'm seeing is a C in my mind. It starts with a C. Circuit? Her Chris, her her lightning pointer. Because <laughs> she gets it, it. It doesn't make sense. It helps her control well, it, I guess. All of that I didn't understand. And then when it breaks, I'm like, is that a big deal? Conduit. 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 Thank you. Yeah. And then, you know, it like slips out of somebody's hand at some point. Yeah. And, and she breaks. has more than one. So I'm like, where did we get all these conduits? I thought it was just like a one thing. Because it doesn't work any sense. Yeah. It, it was little things like that. Yeah. That, and it's the word stones. Wait, is that what they called them? Ward, word, word stones. <laughs> word, word stones. Ward stones. Ward stones. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the in my mind. The word stones, there's two different metals, animantium. Just kidding. It's not animantium. And they learn how to tie <laughs> off. Um, they learn how to tie off weaves. It's, vi- it's vibranium. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Where did it's this come from? <laughs> right. So we have all of this magic lore and all of this historical lore coming up without any of the time that we need to sit with it and understand it. Mm-hmm. So when you fucking use it as a plot device later, we actually understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is frustrating for me because I want to understand. Yeah. I want to understand the moment that you had. Okay, here's a great example. When Violet realizes that Zayden has... So Violet figures out, as Violet does, that Zayden has a second signet because she knows that Sigail was also bonded to Zayden's grandmother. As does everyone, though. Everyone knows that. He says no They say it in in the the beginning of... Well, no, he tells them he doesn't have a one, but everyone knows that Sigail bonded his grandfather. I didn't remember that. I didn't remember it either, but on my reread... A fourth wing, they say it in like the fourth or fifth chapter. They say it one time. Yes. In fourth wing. Bloop. She kind of, because she says in the records, it actually yeah. says it's his great uncle. Yeah, exactly. So it's written. Oh, that's another thing is we haven't talked about the structure of the book and that there's these little missives and these little clippets. It's very Dune. Is it? Yeah, it is yeah, a Dune thing. That's the Dune yeah, Dune modus operandi. Th- I mm. throw in some myths, some books that don't exist, and I give you these little snippets yeah. from it, and it gives you a piece of the world. Well, in Jacinia, yeah. there's this like doomy kind of thing that happens at the beginning of Fourth Wing, which we didn't mention an hour ago when we talked about it. Um, <laughs> is that just in the first line in the Fourth Wing? It's like this is a consolidation of all of these different sources that I've had. To keep their word alive. And so we start off with this very, like, do they even make it? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and I, I see a lot of people <laughs> online saying, like, okay. Um, okay. like she's not going to kill them off. I'm like, we don't, you don't know you that. You don't know. You don't know that. Why do you have faith in her to do that? Because no. she does it. We don't know. I hope. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 
back back to the third. The what, third what is the third episode? <laughs> the third episode is called um, "Camping Trip with Infantry." Yes. Um, so the, <laughs> so we learn that infantry you, exists. The infantry exists, and we congratulations. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we knew that. Welcome. Oh, yeah. Welcome. Nah. Kind of. So In we theory. go out with the boots on the ground. We put fourth wing with the fourth wing, and we put second squad with the second squad. And, and they judgy as shit. They too. line them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they are like squared the fuck away. They are mm, like Marines to me. Yeah. They are like, and I, I do like, I will say this as someone who is an ex army wife who's grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, right next to Fort Bragg. What do they call it now? Fort Freedom. What's it called now? Is it not Fort Bragg anymore? No, they changed the name. Um, I think Bragg was a b- bad dude. Oh. I think he, yeah, anyways. Hmm. Um, you know, being in this military culture a lot, I do like, I mean, I, I do like that point of it. There, it is, it does feel the way that Zayden and Violet have to plan to see each other. Their dragons are bonded. He has, he's not in school anymore. He gets his orders and he's, he, I post, had so many fucking problems. Post changes. He, you know, he has to go <laughs> yeah. out to this other base. Yeah. The way that they have to plan to see each other, that does feel like dating somebody in the military. Yeah. Like I, my ex husband, we only saw each other so often because mm-hmm. we had to always plan. It was always long distance. Like, that felt true. I was like, I appreciate this because people in the military are going to appreciate the, the Yeah. The and your impact. life is not in your control. No, it's not. I was and okay it, with them keeping them apart, like Zayden and but Violet not the apart. Dragons. But then they keep the dragons apart. Right. And, and so, you know you're causing the dragons actual physical pain. But I, they don't care about the dragons. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make any sense no. why they don't care about the dragons. No, it doesn't. Um, w- it, Did we learn? Is Varish a fucking Venon? It doesn't matter. So it doesn't. Don't we, don't he does. We that, we'll find out when he comes back. Don't yeah, we learn we'll ask that, him when he comes back we'll to life. We'll ask him when he comes back. Wait, we learn that, okay, the end of the book, just because you've read this, everybody's read this, the end of our book, when Shadow Daddy goes to get seasonal allergies. Mm-hmm. We learned there's some red ice at eye. Oh, yeah. Did you read that part? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Okay, sorry. That's Wheel of Time. Yeah, so I was like, time you find out there's a secret my, other ice and My eye. universe, my 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 brain. I wish you could have seen me <laughs> diving through different universes to place like that was really fast flipping Wheel through universes to also figure out which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> This is like a. It, this is I've read this in like six yeah, series so probably. End of the like, book. Oh no, the bad guys in, invaded us. So and we were too arrogant to realize right. it. So we get all these things like the dragons. These people at Basquia, they pull their they pull their magic from the dragons, but you can also pull magic from like what feels like the source, which is actually yeah. just the earth. Right. But when you do that, you turn into a venom, which. Is seems way more powerful, but we don't understand enough of the lore and the magic to understand what's happening. But Zayden does that to kill the bad guy at the end of this, the sage at yeah. the end of this book. And so Zayden turns into a venom. And so now he's going to go talk to Jack Barlow. <laughs> and we learned that they're actually the venom everywhere. Yeah. And that the venom have been among us like scrolls. Yeah. That's a Marvel reference, sorry. That's okay. But, like, they live amongst the people. And we learn that there's some, th- that Venon have been tr- assassinating all of the writers that were, so basically this military has been infiltrated, inf- infiltrated, infiltrated yeah. by Venon. So now there's all these bigger, bigger questions. I think Farish was a Venon. I think that's why he, his his dragon listened to him. Yeah. And not the other way around. Yeah. So there are a lot of things happen in this. So they go on the army trip. We learn that they've created a juice that cuts off their. That was the only point of that whole section. I was going to say, what was the point of that episode? That and it. that was it. Yeah. That, that little juice that, that they drink. They have the been, magical herb that they keeps have, everybody from talking to their dragons. That mm-hmm. they've, that, and their signets. And they've yeah. been a- experimenting with ways to cut people off At from their dragons. At that moment, I would never drink anything ever again. Yeah, right. correct. Uh, I mean, and, Ever. and then at the he just hands her the glass and she, glug, 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 glug. yeah, I'm like why would you She's drink like, that? Oh, that tastes really funny. He needs to clean his wine skin out. Yeah, <laughs> do want them to work with the infantry. That's how military tactics work. Like, like you yeah, do. It was, fine. That was all fine. Like, it was fine. Yeah, 
And then we get our next chapter, our next fun. episode is Love Letters with a Soldier. <laughs> and this is where we get that back and forth. Yeah, he's where, like, nothing about me is secret. There's just things that I have to keep secret. And she's like, mm. Yeah, she's <laughs> really me. frustrated. She doesn't trust him. I get that he has betrayed her. And I get how trust works. I mean, I She river. says one point, she says, love is hope. And I, I literally in my head went, bitch, love is trust. Yeah. And you are focusing on the wrong damn thing. You can hope all day that your man's going to be good to you, but your man's actually good to you. Yeah. At that point in the book, I thought of Taylor Swift lyrics. Oh, let's I please do tell. Um, I think it's from the song August. Yeah. Back when I was living for the hope of it all. Right. So that, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's what stuck out to me. I mean, in that, I get it. In that episode. Right. I did like when she talks to Imogen about it. And she's like, imagine you had battle axes in your armoire. And like one fell Imogen out. And almost, like, I know. And Imogen I was like, that. if you didn't think there were battle axes in the armoire when you started dating him, you were the only one lying to yourself. Right. She calls her on I it. I think she's like my favorite. Imogen, Imogen is great. Yeah. I do like well, Imogen. And it also proves the point that Yaros knows that this, a lot of this issue is... A, this uh, is an editing issue. An editor needed a, to be like, this is going on too long. Can we it, can we yeah. snip this? This is going to be hard on a reader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This needs to be cleaned up. How do we shorten this and how do we clean it yeah, up? Yeah, we could have pushed that conversation with Imogen four chapters earlier, had her actually think about what she said instead of just being like, you don't get it. Yeah. And then move on. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we all move on. Yeah. Like we could have all collectively but moved she, on. But she's, she's acknowledging that Violet is the one that is struggling with the insecurity and the trust. Yeah. That Zayden is doing like, he straight up, he's like, babe, babe, <laughs> babe. You, he calls her on it too. He's like, I am communicating with you. You also have to do the work. Yeah. And he calls her on it. Like mm -hmm. if I'm going to trust you and rely on you and tell you all these things, you also have to do the work and start communicating. Ask the questions that you're wondering. Don't just not say it. Because part of communication is also, like, you can't not share your expectations. You can't yeah. not share. Like, if you need something, you have to say it. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. She I, was keeping so much from him. She was keeping so much to herself, which is fine as long as you're not constantly bitching about full disclosure. And they, he right. could die tomorrow. Like yes. every time he leaves, he could not come back ever again. Right. And she's dwelling on it. Like just the rumination is. We've set up a world where she doesn't have that kind of time. Right. And where she's not that kind of character until she is. Right. And even then she'll realize, oh, shit, he could he could die and I just let him go. And then as soon as he comes back, she's like, oh. Yeah. He's still not telling well, me. Well, and it's ever. just the whole thing. It's like, oh, we're not going to have sex again. And then that just kind of like fades away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember a moment. And maybe I'm, this is just me. Um, I don't remember a moment where she was like, oh, you deserve the sex again. Like, now we're going to, now it's time for. She just gets like horny and she's like, okay, we can yeah, do it. Yeah, because she she's just got can't the finest, resist. most responsible man in the world. Yeah. Right? And then he tells her no. He tells her no. Yeah, He's I'm, like, because no, I'm not because... going to be. I'm not going to let our relationship, I don't want you, because he knows her better than she knows herself. Yeah. Not that she, wait, let me, but like in the store, like, but like not in a tri 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 typical man way mm. where like. <laughs> he realizes what that will mean for their relationship right. and he, he wants them to fix it first. He he's recognizes just the emotional, yeah. he's like emotionally intelligent enough to know if we sleep together, you might make it like this in your brain. Yeah. Not that he knows better than her. Just like I think the healthiest thing for our relationship right now is to not. Yeah. Right. Let's fix this first. Let's fix Instead this of first. slapping sex band-aid on it. Right. And then just Even though hoping I... everything gets together. Yeah. That boy, he is a, a handsome man. Mm -hmm. He is very... A all of them man. are handsome men. Yep. Because in my brain, they're all these AI perfect Instagram face people. Whatever that... happened to um, his cousin? Uh, Bodie? Bodie pops in, in and out. He's in it. There's just so many characters. <clears throat> and then people will die and I'm I like, wait, forgot about him. Because there's that yeah. one point where they're in the college and somebody walks up 
Because they're all going to be assassinated because they're like, the best way to keep a secret is to just kill everybody who knows the secret. Right. But who's giving those orders? That's another thing. Like, right, who but, is giving the Vin and the orders? Are they hive mind? Are they have a hive yeah, mind? Yeah, they, they make that reference later because remember, oh, no, they can know what the wyverns know because the wyverns see them. And she's like, well, we know the wyverns can communicate with their handlers or whatever. Yeah. So whatever they saw. Right. They mm -hmm. saw. Right. I don't know, but that, that guy walks up and that one lady's like, oh, yeah, I'm Violet. What are you going to do about it? And he breaks her neck. And oh, Violet yeah. is like, oh, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was that and was I, unsettling. I was like, who was that? I don't remember. Because she sees her when they go back to the college and she's like, whoa, I love your purple hair. It looks so great. Like we knew her from the first book. Uh huh. And I was like, I don't know who this person is. Yeah. And then she died and everyone's like, Whoa. Yeah. Woo. Dodge right, that bullet. Right. I guess they are, really are serious about killing you. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yep. if what if Violet had turned around and said, I'm Violet? I mean, it, she was this close to doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't, have, she's not like, oh man, I almost died today. She's just like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, my next episode mm -hmm. is the return of the squished venom boy. So this is where <laughs> they're in class. Jeff. And I do like this one thing that happened. Like, I I'm, I should stop being so hard on the book. I, I do like a lot of things about this book. I like the teachers. There's this one that one teacher that's trying to give them signals. Like we realize yeah. that mm -hmm. they are also being lied to. They are also seeing what's happening. We're seeing the hierarchy of the this militaristic country falling apart. Mm -hmm. Eric is the best addition to this. He's the king's boy. Yes. Who was like, fuck my dad. Oh, yeah. I know the truth. Yeah. Please don't call me Cam anymore. My name is now... I think he calls it's himself like Rowan a Whitethorn. It's A A R I C. <laughs> Eric. 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 Yeah. Eric. Um, so Eric, he's cool. I like him. He's my favorite, like addition to yeah. the book. Um, but when Jack Barlow comes back, Jack Barlow comes back all hunky dory, happy nice, happy go lucky. Yeah. We we already knew his dragon was still around. And his girlfriend, Caroline, I do think it's his girlfriend because Violet says in the first book they're really close. And she's like going to see Naolin. So, or Na Nolan, Nolan, Nolan yeah. Colonel Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Nolan, um, who is, we? I thought he was going to be a Venon because he was so fucked up. He was like draining himself of. Well, we don't know that he's not because he betrays her in the end. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep, that's true. Um, and they let Jack out. They let Jack out. So I think them, like, yeah, I think they've been hiding the venom. They've definitely infiltrated. They're yeah. definitely, this is bigger than we thought. Mm -hmm. um, when they keep constantly attacking, we knew, we learned in this book that Jack Barlow had red eyes in the first book. Yeah. I didn't. She's like, I mean, wow, I just thought he was that evil that his eyes were bloodshot. Well, and then the, you know, he's the one with the orange allergy, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the orange juice is going to it's be. It's going to be real funny. It's that's like, the... did you ever see the movie? Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. <laughs> you just shoot everybody with orange juice. Did you ever see the movie? Um... Never mind, I don't remember what it's it was. It's going to be like the dandruff shampoo in Evolution. Oh, my God, that's what I was just saying. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Selenium. Selenium. <laughs> Oh my God, Rachel, I'm so sorry, but when I just said, have you ever seen, I was thinking about evolution. I was about to be like the movie with Mulder in it. Yeah. David Duchovny. Oh my and, gosh. And the, <laughs> and the secret that ends up like being. feels like from a different lifetime. The secret ends up being head and shoulders because yes. it's yeah. selenium. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. That was such a magical moment for me. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? That That's it. Wild. We've reached another wow. level. Like, another level. We don't another, even like, need to talk anymore. No. The pod has now leveled just up. Just stare yeah. at each other. <laughs> Oh, and hope it translates well. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't believe you read my mind. Um, it's like we're in. And it's <laughs> like we're of a hive mind. I was going to say yeah. that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, Ven and Boy comes back. And, um, yeah, I think that was a kind of, you know, I get it in the grand scheme of things. I think he was probably always going to come back. These are written like soap operas. You never yes. know what's going to happen. He came back from his coma. Yeah. Like a fucking mountain dropped on him. But that's yeah. fine. It's fine. Right. Meanwhile, we lost Liam. Sloan. I like Sloan as an addition. I do like the mm -hmm. way that Violet, this is a very mature thing for Violet to do. Yes. She doesn't let Sloan's distaste of her or anger towards her 
limit her actually helping Sloan. Yeah. Which like is, an adult. Right. Which yeah. is why she feels so inconsistent. Because right. in this case, she's like, you hate my guts. I, you know, I'm sorry. I get it, but I also loved your brother and promised and your I brother. And I made a promise, yeah. and yeah. I'm going to do this. I right. can't take this realization about myself and transfer that to my, like, faded mate. I can't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't give him any grace. I can right. give you all the grace. Right. Well, and that is also, you know who did that? You know who did that? Kale. <laughs> he Kale. held. You know, you held. And that is something that happens is. You hold your relationship, your partner, to a higher standard than you hold yourself sometimes. And that was what I found. I found her to be really hypocritical. Yeah. And not in a way where it was like a growth journey. Which, again, works. And it's fine. It's important to kind of have that. But it has to be, like, healing. Yeah. There has to be moments where you go, oh, shit, the self-awareness. I got to feel like we're getting better. And I didn't really ever feel like we got better. Like, it just went away. I felt like finally they just gave up. And we're like, well, fuck it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You're going to have secrets, whatever. Let's yeah. go fine. Let's go bang. Yeah. There wasn't, and the throne scene was hot like fire. Yeah. That was pretty good. It was great. Let's all take a moment. My wife, nope, my chair, my house, my woman, my table, my violet. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you Can says. I draw a parallel? Yeah. Dorian's shadow hands. Right. I read a good read review earlier that this girl just like demolished this and how many tropes are borrowed from other people. And that doesn't bother me because you're, you're doing things that I like yeah, and you're just putting it in another book. And mm-hmm. I think there are things about this that feel original. Like we're always yeah. going to get schools. It's a really good way to keep everybody centralized. It gives us several years of having to be in one place. Yep. It's built in conflict. It's built in conflict. Um, also, we we've got to run out of ideas eventually, right? Well, I don't mind, like, because sometimes you no. read a book and you're like, "Wow, well, I really liked that. I'd like to see what another author does with it." And sure. then you go and read mm-hmm. it again, and you're like, oh, "Okay, cool. I like their take on that." Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fine. I think right. it's fine. I think, yeah. yeah, I think we're just seeing the proliferation of these really accessible fantasy novels, and you have these people that are like. You've been a reader. You've been a reader your whole life. You've read tons of stuff. Right. We've referenced some pretty obscure books in this podcast, this particular podcast that, you know, even if you've seen The Wheel of Time, the television show, have you gone on and read all, what, 16? Yeah, no. No, hell no. 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 I I got through three. I mean, maybe one day I'll I'll make it through. And it's okay. But like, then you just see the, you kind of see the split. You see the like. I'm getting back into reading because of these books. Right. And so to me, these are what books are. Yeah. And then there's the people that are like, I mean, they're okay, but like Tolkien invented a language. We right. all know that, right? Right, right. Right. Yeah. Like an actual factual language. An right. Actual language. Yeah. yeah. An actual language. Um, and and I spent years doing it. Right. He wrote The Lord of the Rings. And like backstory to the Lord of the Rings and maybe a couple other things. And, and some that's it. and some textbooks to go with it. Yeah, that was yeah. his life's work. That was his and life's work. It was amazing. Right. And it was amazing. And that doesn't mean these are not good. Yeah. But they are a different kind of story. Yeah. They're a different yeah. kind totally different. of book. entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Um my next episode after um the return of the squished venom boy is Torture Chamber with Ghosts. <laughs> Because in this school, you have to learn how to be interrogated and not give up anything, which we learned that Violet is already has a special set of skills. And one of them is the ability to compartmentalize pain. And mm-hmm. Liam pops up. Yeah. So and, and amongst this and I had Rachel and we're going to talk about this in a second. But one of the biggest questions out there in the book talk and world of fucking Iron Flame is what is Violet's second signet? And we know she's going to get a second one. The revelation with Andarna, I love that. I love yeah. where we're going with Andarna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Andarna and Tarn are the best part of these books, no For doubt. Sure. They are. Yes. Sa- Tarn is sassy as fuck. We didn't mention that in the first pod. Like he, His personality is... Tardy Tarn. Mm. Yeah. Tardy Tarn. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's always fucking through. He's like, I'm, I'm three minutes, minutes away. Out. I'm 15 minutes out. <laughs> I'm two minutes away. <laughs> Hold it together. <laughs> yeah. You got this. You got this. He <laughs> yeah. shows up right after but Violet's like, vanquished everybody. Not, yeah. Did the editors not read that and go, 
You know, maybe he couldn't be like a Uber driver that's just always like, <laughs> a few minutes away. Yeah, is he circling the block with the <laughs> shit? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he's always n- not, like. There's he. I mean, mm. how are you always three, three minutes, minutes away? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he is so sassy in the first book. You know, the the line "Should I get the wing leader?" is one of the funniest things ever. Yeah, like he's so sn- snippy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's such a curmudgeon. Don't and, insult me. Yeah, yeah. He's so funny, and he continues to be funny. And then Darna in this. We learn really early, and I caught the chameleon thing. I saw that happening. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm reading the clues. <laughs> <laughs> I looked up at the sky, and it was really bright. And for a second, she and looked, purple. looked blue. Oh, yeah. That's so weird. It must have been a reflection <laughs> in the sky. I wonder the light in my eye. Black scale. <laughs> <laughs> must have been my astigmatism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so her learning, like learning that Andorna, but like the end when Andorna is all of a sudden like, I've waited for you. I hatched when you turned eighteen. Yeah, yes. what girl? I love that. Bring in them gods. We, if you are always painting a picture every single time the gods are mentioned, I mean they're a whole character in themselves. Yeah, and I feel like the gods are going to end up being dragons. Gonna, she, that's the only scale she can go to because we started with death and we had to go up. Right. We're gonna eventually bring in gods because we got no fucking elsewhere to go. Right. We gotta yeah. bring them in unless we just lateral for a few books and then that's gonna be hard too. We're not gonna. She doesn't know how. I don't know. I mean, maybe she'll learn. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's okay to slow down. I don't I know if you can rather, slow down in a third book. Like, like how is and, she going to do that? And to be honest, according to this timeline, what was seven months from November? Would that be May June? of next year? June of next year? Yeah. That's another book by June. Like, slow down, girl. Put it out. We can wait. I, I will wait till January 2025. I will wait two years. Yeah. Okay. But no longer. But no <laughs> but longer. But not once. It's hard. Second. It's hard after two. Yeah. yeah. But... Yeah, it just, ugh. yeah. We were going to talk about her second signet. That's her what you were leading signet. up to. So Rachel has you. a theory Ooh. about the segment, second signet. Tell me what you thought, because I asked you to look for it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's going to be gravity manipulation. That would be my guess, because we mentioned it at least four times. There's a part where she's kissing him, and she goes, she, she when she was kissing him, she felt as light as air, like she could fly. Right. And then there's other scenes where she's with him and she's like, oh, that's gravity. That must be gravity pulling my heart towards the ground or whatever. And it was the very specific way that she mentioned it each time. Like Mm -hmm. anytime she was in a heightened emotional situation, it was like, oh, shit, gravity. Plus, she's having nightmares about getting off the ground. How am I going to get off the ground? Because we know the venom can kill you. Oh, yeah. By sucking the energy out from beneath your feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she can't do a whole bunch of the maneuvers because... She needs adaptations for riding on Taren. And so she can't do like the run jump off like everybody else can. She can't do a whole bunch of the stuff like they can. I'm convinced. Yeah. So it's solves- sold. It it yeah. It plugs all a lot of her I holes. don't know if I've heard another person say that. So I'm I'm about it. I did use the PDF version of the book to look up how many well, I guess you can use your Kindle, but I don't have that version. Um I looked up how many times gravity was mentioned and it's thirteen. And something that Yaros does do is she uses the word um, gravity turned or gravity f- gr- the gravity something to describe your stomach flipping. Yeah. So she uses gravity in one sense a lot to describe her emotional response to something um, mm-hmm. consistently. Yeah. Um, but I agree. I think that would be something that makes a lot of sense. That's what I would do. Right. Even if she can't fly. Right. If she can just manipulate gravity like yeah i because she could pull the venom off the ground yeah because also we mentioned several times oh they're going to the ground to feed and the venom always hold them up like a force like they use the force to yeah the force yeah they use the that's what they do yeah. also they're, she could ride in darna exactly if she didn't have exactly. to that yes because in darna's never gonna she's because not they gonna made be able a, to bear a rider yeah right exactly but, so just but, like, but you know what that opens up room for tarn to die which uh, I know one of those dragons were going to lose one of those I dragons. was worried he was going to die in this nah, book. No, I do believe so. she'll hold out on us for that. That's a that's a end book. That is what you do at the end of your yes. series. Yeah. I I am on the same I do I am 
walking along in the school of thought that her second signet is needs based mm. um, and is because of her raw magic. I think that she is tuned into raw magic in a way that other people are not. And I think it is needs based. And I think that that will be a part of it. Yeah. I think that when the she had the dagger and she needed it hidden through the wall and all of a sudden Rihanna could pull that through the wall. I think that she did it. I think that when Mira was like, I can't pull, I can't shield you right now. I cannot shield you right now. When they're in the... The, the little yeah. gladiator field. Yes. What is it? A, yeah. Arena? The arena. family road trip. <laughs> oh, yeah. What did I call that? I think I called that <laughs> vacation time or something. Adventures with Griffins. Yeah, that part, Mira all of a sudden could shield. Like, people are all of a sudden doing things they didn't think they could do, and I think it's definitely needs-based. Hmm. I think that... So, like, she can amplify other people's powers? I don't necessarily think it's an amplify. I think it's, she's I need your power it. to work right now. She's taking it. Yeah. She's wielding them. Them, okay. Because there's a part where Felix, when she's training with Felix, where he goes, you wielded Zayden because you needed these people to get out of that school. Like, they specifically say you wielded Zayden. I think she can wield other people just like the Venon can wield people because there's a part in the book where the one of the sages is like, he wants to wield you. The Venon can wield other people's powers. I can use you to do what you can do. Mm. And so I think because she has some kind of connection from the Venon, maybe her mom pulled from the source, maybe something like that. I think Violet can wield other people's signets, like Rogue or Storm. I also think she's kind of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I definitely do think it's needs-based, but I think it's much more powerful than we understand. Um, I think the part about him saying the reason why it shows up li as lightning is because that's what you think it has to show up as. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that it was intentional that they were leading her astray in the um, – In the college. In the college. I yeah. don't think they wanted her to be able to aim. You know, they were treating her like a nuke. Yeah. They were like, we want you to be as big and to do this as much as possible. But I think that, you know, if Varish had a say in her training, and I don't know if y'all saw, there was one of the, are they called missives the top? The, yeah. The the missive, the, one of the, before we, the chapter before we met Varish, it says Varish had been, he got pulled out of the field because he killed two people during an interrogation. Yeah. So he was already going evil. And um, I think that – what were we talking about? Varish. Varish. Killed two people. Killed two people. I think he was already probably venom. I think yeah. he was already working hive mind with the sage and the general. Yeah. Um, and I think that they were, they were leading – they were training Violet to be captured by the venom. Yeah. And it's a bigger deal. To just pull as much power as possible. Yeah. I mean yeah. that's where my brain goes. So my brain goes, isn't, uh, don't you think that the Venon are in charge of like the whole school? Probably. Yeah, like they're maybe. at the very top. Because why else would you um, make the Griffins the enemy? Yeah. Well, it's like it's it's like the propaganda thing. Yeah. They needed, they, for they need somewhere else to point. The finger. They did the, the deflection of the Griffins. Yeah. Right. And what was the point of Navarre to make the Griffins the bad guys rather than the Venon the bad guys? Like, where did that come from? I mean, that honestly could have just been some dumbass leader, like royalty. I don't know. I, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a great... That's a great... Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make a ton of sense why they would hide it. Yeah. Unless they would, they don't want to peep... They don't want people to wonder why they're not helping the people on the other side. So they need the people in, is it Primorial? Poroma. Poromeal. Poromeal. They need the people on, in Poromeal to be, um, they need them to be the bad guys. Because if the Venon are the bad guys, then, right. the, then the regular people are victims. Right. And we're killing them at the border. Right. right. So now we're like the closed border. And then, then the whole thing with the wards. And so that like ugh, that that magic system, I really, really struggled because of her inability to 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 offer that to us with some clarity. Yeah. It was the runes and shit. I shouldn't have had to read the same thing four times. An example of when in this book where I was like, 
what? <laughs> is when they are, this is in the episode, mountain climbing for camaraderie and bond building where 10% will definitely die. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay, let, well, let's try and hit it chronologically. We're at the point where, like, the first half, the, the end of the first part, right? Yeah. The whole, a whole book. Varish, who, Rachel, when you were talking about him, I was like, girl, he does mid-book. Like, she doesn't even use him. He's coming back. She doesn't even use him very long. But they start torturing. Um, they start torturing I her. I hate torture scenes. Yeah. I hate torture scenes so much. They're it's hard. not even because they're stressful. It just feels so cheap. Right. Like, you didn't have another way. You yeah. didn't have another way to get this through to me. Yeah. Like. <sighs> well, we get that Liam scene. And that's what I really. I. That's one of my favorite parts about this book. I'm not going to bullshit. Really liked and I really it. hope that it doesn't end up being something. If I, only we'd read something else where somebody kept getting hurt and healed and then re hurt again mm. and ultimately hallucinates a dead loved one in order to oh. gain the strength needed to. That's escape. why it felt cozy to us. When did Is that, that happen? Why? why am I not? Where's my wife? Oh, got it. <laughs> Where's my wife? Oh, where is my wife? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, yeah, iron I like the, the iron Liam, coffin. I don't know who you're talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Liam comes and he is so gentle. It's like she needed him in that moment and he appeared. Yeah. That's what I'm talking. It's very needs based. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need him to be here. And I think here Malik he is. sent him. Yes. The gods. Yes. She is somebody or Indarna is somebody. And maybe Indarna is one of the gods. She could be. Yeah, because if she's that intentional, I think the dragons, I think Malik and Dooney, D-U-N-N-E, Dune, Dun, whatever, however that's going to be pronounced, they're all dragons. And the dragons are like, are going to end up being a deity, which is why I don't fucking understand why they're, there's not more reverence. Yeah. Um. But that that was a really cool scene. I liked that. I was happy about that. I was like, yeah, I'm glad you're here because it was really sad when you left. Yeah. And they have this very rational like conversation. She's and she's like, I didn't let I didn't know Malik let people just wander around. He's like, I'm not wandering, I'm right here. Yeah. And I la he go I you know what he it. says? He says, I'm right where you he says, I'm right where I'm needed. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And there it's the constant mention of the needs. Yeah. You wielded him. You needed that. The yeah. this idea that signets are based on if if andarna is so powerful that she can be whatever color she wants to be oh and she wanted to be black like tarn oh my god Aww. so sweet that little baby mm -hmm. angel i love so her cute. she's so feisty um, i did like teenage yeah teenage adolescent. dragon like that's fine yeah that was fine i'm i'm cool with yeah. one adolescent being an asshole sure but like your immature in relationship anyways or am I just giving Violet a hard time because she's a woman no I don't no. think so no I'm trying to give her the BOD I no. just it's the rumination it's the open the first person rumination is it's the really... inconsistency yeah. we trusted her to be a, char a type of character from fourth wing and then she betrayed us and was a totally different character right in Iron Flame. Right. And then we got beat over the head with the plot stick for 900 pages. Yeah, it's a long book. Okay, here is an <laughs> example. Um, F Iron Flame, which a lot of people got fucked up copies of, um, just like and when it's printed, it looks like a cheap yeah. paper bound. Like even the printing of it. Like I pulled out one of my Bloomsbury books and was like flipping through it. It's beautiful. The binding is stunning. It is mm -hmm. just so quality. Crescent City is okay, Kingdom of Ash. Yeah. This book is just as big as that book. Yeah. It's just smaller. It's tighter and bigger on yeah. the, like the page. Yeah, the, it, there's a lot of text. Oh wow! But like, look at that copy of Kingdom of the Ash right there. Like, it's yeah. just as big. It's a really fucking long book. It's really fucking long. And it's too. It's too long. It did too much. It could have ended after the first part. And Red Tower Those said, pages "No, are really keep thin. going." Yeah. Because yeah. oh, we yeah. need our we need our chunky fantasy books, which is this thing we've all like. Oh, I want a thick but book. But it, it is. All, I Not only always. want it chunky if it's doing a lot and it's necessary that it's doing that much. Right. Yeah. Which would have been like shifting points of view. Right. We could have had this length if like when Zayden leaves, we left with Zayden sometimes. We didn't at all. And we never do. Nope. And that, we only live in You know who learned how to Violet's do that? <laughs> no, who? I'm not going to say it. 
Her name starts with an S. Her middle name starts with a J. What's her last name start with? M. <laughs> um, it starts with an M and like, it ends with an S. I had a friend. There's some A's in the middle. <laughs> a couple of them. Two, to be exact. <laughs> I had a friend text me today and she was like, did Violet's mother die saving her before Zayden pulled from the earth? And does that mean that his sacrifice wasn't worth anything? So I, and I was like, we literally don't, don't know. His, we don't know we, what the timeline of when we, happened. He got mm-hmm. his, what we know, and I went back and I reread it. We know that Z- the only reason Zayden, Zayden and Violet opened up their, their bond. They shouted down the bond at each other. Yeah. <laughs> and they were both dying. Yeah. Yes. And that is why. And he, the only thing that came go- came out of him is that he pulled enough power to supposedly kill the Venom Sage. Yeah. That's it. He said he saw that body go into the ravine and he's waiting for it to pop back up. Yeah. That's all Zanin was able to accomplish. Yeah. Besides completely betraying Sigal. Yeah. And that's another thing I do think that my theory on why the dragons aren't bonding anymore is because the dragons know that Venon, if they are pulling from the ground and bonded to dragons, they take over the dragon. Yeah. And the dragons know that's happening, especially if there are Venon wa- Ven- Ven- walking around. Yeah. That that is why, because Varish had power over Solas. That actually yeah. makes sense. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Yes. Thank you. Thank you for bringing I mean, some that, sense into this. Yeah, <laughs> so that's why the dragons, but, like, I don't know why they're not talking about it. Why wouldn't right. you talk? Hey, we know that the venom are coming around. Why wouldn't Turn say, I mean, I don't know if this actually happened, but, like, if his previous writer became a venom because he pulled from the source to save Brennan, if Naolan pulled from the source to save Brennan, and that is what broke the bond between Taren and his writer like does that break down their bond i don't know i and is that why he won't talk about the death because it wasn't an actual death it was a slow agonizing rip i feel like if they could sever the bond they would do that when they died so their writer wouldn't die so right. i don't think there'd right. be a, there must not be a way for them to consciously sever the unless bond. they have to pull from the earth because they're pulling magic from somewhere else but jack does that and he just takes over his dragon yeah and he's able to just completely and his dragon, his dragon turns kind of evil well, it's just like a puppet. It's like yeah. a dragon meat puppet. Yeah, mm-hmm. dragon yeah. meat puppet. Sad, sad baby Aww. dragon. Yeah, which he then kills really good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, that whole end was like, uh, I hated that. I hated it all so of that. so much. If we had had like. Oh, tell me, how do you picture the damn ward stone? What is it? Ward? Ward stone? Like a, ward stone? Like a boulder. In the ground? The size like of a, half of this room. It's supposed to be like a crystal with sides. But it's. An obelisk, right? Yeah. Oh, I pictured a sphere sky. with circles. Is it like a? We don't even find out there's seven it, circles till later. She's like, oh, seven dragons. Is that why there's seven circles? But like, what circles? Fuck? Like, are they? Is it like a an like a hole in the ground and the? Yeah. It's an obelisk and it goes up, but it's open into the sky. So like the dragons breathe from down maybe onto it. Maybe it's like the things from um, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> the, the like crystals that you charge up in breath of the wild yeah i mean that's what i thought <laughs> yeah, maybe i don't know yeah. it just felt really i don't i don't it know it doesn't that that was another thing that was hard it, i was when, so exhausted by then i didn't i care. was wiped I out was by like, then sure i was like i'm just i gotta get sure. through this and then yeah. and i had like, plenty of time i wasn't out of time for like the podcast or anything uh-uh. i had plenty of time i just couldn't take it anymore i was only reading 50 pages a day and i was still exhausted and then we have the two journals and they're like, oh, yeah, you've been translating this one journal. Well, secret hidden knowledge that we didn't know until just now is that that guy was an asshole and he didn't want anybody else to know how to activate the Wardstones. But the lady who wrote her journal, who you happen to leave with at the college because it got captured by Nolan, she's the one who actually wanted everybody to know. But they actually say the same thing because it's like the power of the six and the one unite to create the iron flame. And the other one's like the power of the seven unite to create the which is the same iron thing plane. and they're like they're like oh my god that's the secret like what's the fucking secret it's the exact same thing <laughs> and then then she's like oh is that why there's seven circles 
We didn't know there were seven circles until that moment. And then they're like, oh, that makes so much sense. You know who would have caught that? An editor. An editor. There was just no time to build this. No. There was so many new things, so many new magics, Ugh. so many new... And then the ward This breaks. is a great example of what happens when a book is rushed. Yeah, the yes. ward breaks, and why... she's like, Brennan, can you, can you heal a ward? And he's like, sure. Well, but Brennan might have been able to heal the ward if... Because she, she needed, needed it him done. Too. That would make sense. But she it needed like, it done. And yeah. so she, oh. so in a she way, need ampl- her mom to die? No, and she didn't have any control over that. Yeah. And that, but she might have, like, I mean, Sloan, all of a sudden, her siphoning power was able to move an entire body worth of, of magic. power. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I just, I need them to slow down. I need them to. Hire people with the experience needed to make a book like this. If you're gonna, like, you're gonna lose people, you're gonna lose readers. Yep. Yeah, reader. I mean, yeah. And yeah, you know, I, I, I will. I, like I said, I will continue. I, I, I do like this story. I do like these characters. I love Zayden, and I love Andarna, and I love Taryn, and I love Imogen, and oh, I Imogen. love Eric, and I love. I, 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 I want to keep reading these, and I'm going to. But I want them to slow down. And granted, I feel like, are we middle? Am I middle aged? No, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot. Just before we start talking about because we're old people. <laughs> um, I read this book and then I went from this to Children of Dune. And going from Rebecca Yaros to Frank Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it led me to think about a lot of stuff because Frank Herbert has no action. For as action packed as the adaptations tend to be, mm-hmm. like Dune is all dialogue. Yeah. Right. It is talk, action talk, will talk. happen and then we talk about it. Yeah. And it just happens between the scenes where people are talking about it. It doesn't mm-hmm. we don't see any anything. We don't right. see any action. And I, I don't mind that. I you can infer all the action happening from the dialogue because his book is not written to be turned into a movie or a television show. He's writing it in the seventies. Mm-hmm. And maybe Stephen King and a couple other people are getting adaptations, but he's not looking for this huge fantasy epic, the third story in a really large epic right. to be turned I mean, into a movie. That would have been unheard of at the time. And the way this is written, it's like she wanted to be able to make the script as easily as possible. Right. And it's, that's another mm-hmm. thing. We didn't even go into the dialogue, which is actually really immature. Yeah, it's basically like I'm writing this with the express idea. Well, she that had, it a, will be she put had on. a TV deal by this point. Yeah, yeah, and it's written. It's that like way. a script. It is. A, it's written like a an episodic television show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like I binge TV shows. I don't. Mi- I can't binge a TV show. Yeah. It's too stress. I don't like it. I don't like all that relentless things coming at me. All yeah. the plot and all the twist. I don't like that. And this is what it felt like to me. Is like I was being forced to sit down and binge this really high action television mm. show where every single episode something more and more and more dramatic was happening. Right. And if I were watching this on TV, I would have just stopped watching it because it was exhausting. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what I love about I am a, a appointment TV watcher and I enjoy that. Like I want especially with an epic TV show you want there to be some time and space in between. Uh, so I was literally about to say about being 40. Am yeah. I middle-aged? <laughs> Is that middle-aged? No, I don't think so. I don't think no. so. I mean, maybe. I, I, I saw someone say middle-aged women are ruining the – did I send you all that TikTok? Middle-aged no. women are ruining the publishing world. Oh, thank you. Blame women for liking something again. Sure. Um. But like women demanding that there be spice in everything. I don't want there to be spice in anything. I would actually prefer it to be a great story, emotionally relevant, and there to be a like – I just like the connection and the right. romance. If there's spice, there's spice. If there's not, I'll still read it. I yeah. have read – my thing is I spent years and years and years and years reading fantasy with zero right. well-written yeah. women. They just hate that romance is coming – out of the like we're coming r- romance itself is becoming a more legitimate genre yeah. it's and been I, here it's always and been i here. don't think young adult books need spice in them but also don't write adult books like they're young adults right they're like Correct. new adults i heard that used new adult like where it's like mm-hmm. silver flames would be new adult i don't know what that means though just fantasy <laughs> it's just like fantasy books written for adult women yeah, yeah. or adults that like emotional connections and romance there used to be a male genre just male, male fiction. Really? And it was the like. That's not everything? 
No, it had its own little classification and mm. it was the like spy or the like I when I pull, pull out a gun, I tell you the exact make and model of the gun and everything about it. <laughs> it was the like the super ma- <laughs> like the man. Oh, like there will genre. be blood. Like there will be blood. Yeah. And that was a totally legitimate people wrote or Oppenheimer. for that. Oppenheimer. Or Oppenheimer. Yeah. But in books. Right. And then over time, the male genre kind of became everything. Became well, it was already pervasive in the culture. So now we're actually oh, I'm sorry. Were you, are you mad that women are actually getting books that are written to appeal to us? Right. Like, and they're good. Like that didn't happen before to you guys. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Ever so sorry. Well that not at all. Yeah. Yeah. I just I the I don't mind waiting for something that's good. I would rather you take your fucking time and not ruin something that has so much value. Yeah. I just think Sarah J. Mass told everybody, hey, guys, there's this huge section of the population. Hey, sisters. <laughs> yeah. There's hey, this sisters. huge section of the population that isn't being served right now. They don't want to read Lord of the Rings. They're never going to sit down and read three pages description of a tree. Like, oh, sorry. Like Ant Beard? I love like, him. I'm just, you know. He's so old. He talks there, so slow. <laughs> there are people out there who love to read books. They already read maybe like the shorter romance novels. Yeah. But if you gave them a romanticy novel, they're out there and they're waiting yeah. for that stuff. Yeah. And so Sarah was like, look, y'all. Here they are. But she came to that so organically too, though. Mm-hmm. Right. Because she was a fantasy reader her whole life as well. Right. And Throne of Glass and Silver Flames and Crescent City are very different books. Yeah. And, she and I don't mean the series. I mean the book, like the first yeah, I mean, of Glass. And it's not yeah. shade. It's just yeah. she realized, hey, there's this book that I want to read and it doesn't exist yet and I'm going to make it. Yeah. And thank you because I'm I those are my thing. And yeah. then and, all these, and we are rushing it. They are being rushed. Right. Because now people know there's a market. We've got to fill the market. Mm-hmm. But also take your time because there will be 10 hundred. The 10 hundred. That's a thousand. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it could be anything. The same? It's like, it's like 90, 10 times like 15. 7 million. It's like 10 it's times 15. 10 times 15. Do you how know much, how much that is? How much could Mm-mm. that possibly be? <laughs> nope. I mean, it's the needle swing. It's always the needle swing. You know, whenever <laughs> whenever something starts, we swing away one side. Yeah. And then it has to swing back to the middle. So we're just on our way out to the farthest edge yeah. right now. And we'll swing back to the middle where it's like, okay, we know we like romanticy novels. We know the market's there, but the market will wait for a quality book because they're tired of not being able to trust whether these books are going to be good or not. Right. Yeah. Maybe we'll get there. Yeah. Well, and I just, I hope that Red Tower steps into their power. And I hope Sarah or Rebecca Yar steps into her power. And she, I, I will tell you this, and I'm not going to compare her to another author. Okay. I do love an artist that is not paying attention to what people are saying about their shit. People who don't have TikTok. It keeps them authentic. People mm-hmm. who don't have Instagram. That is not – Rebecca Yaros is on TikTok. She is making announcements via TikTok. And I – She's getting way too caught up. Yeah, I, I can see it breaking her too. Like she's gotten a lot of criticism. For a lot of different things. Yeah. Really fast. And I hate that for her. Um, so she needs to like pause and catch get up some psychologically. Help. Like get some publicists. Get some people. Get a publicist. Get a pu- like and yeah. maybe she has be one trained now. like yeah. how to speak. What you to should the be public. putting on the internet. What what will be okay? What will people will expect of you? What it means to have fans from an like a diverse fan base. Mm-hmm. Yeah. versus people just like you. Right. And to be on a national scale and um and to take her time and to write the book she wants to write. And uh you know we've got two books. We've probably got two two three seasons of TV. At least. I mean, and there's a reason why the TV shows catch up with the books. um, Usually. And you don't have to. My fear fear for the series is, like I said earlier, the pacing, it's moving so quickly. I do not have any inclination that I can trust her to write an ending that feels satisfying. Yeah. You've not wrapped up anything for us yet. We've never wrapped anything up. No. Each book, it just stops. Yeah. You know, we find out 
we, you know, we we find out that the Sorengale, General Sorengale, has actually been working for her children the whole time, that she knows a shit ton of things, that she's actually working for the kids over the country. We learn all this stuff about her, and then, like, 12, then 10 gone. chapters, she's gone. Yeah. And um, really quickly. And and I hope that something I know and I see that need for it is because so much of the history has been deleted via this propaganda and this rewriting of history, we need to talk to dead people. And yeah. I really hope that we get that. We might. And even if it's know. just a gift from Malik. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just a gift from Malik. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Anyways, I, I did like this book. I know that I had a lot to say about it because I care. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. I have mixed feelings about a book. I mean, this is why we don't, why I deliberately don't do any like one to five stars because it's just one dimensional. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I if agree. I sat down and I gave this, this a star rating, I don't know what I would comfortably give this. But... Well, Rach, tell me something that you thought this book did well. Maybe Hannah should go first. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I, how's this I, know, go? I know, I didn't mean I to put you do, on the stop. The I do spot. like her. Her character is one of the Violet is one of the strongest people in the group, not because she's physically the strongest person in the group. Right. She's not the fastest. She's not the best at fighting. She's not the she's more powerful, sort of, than most of the people, just in terms of raw power. Right. But she still gets to be relevant and she's still and she's not the leader. Rhiannon yeah. is the leader. Yes, I lo- and I always love that. I learned to love that. Yeah. I mean, that's how yeah, that's nor, how some other stories wrap up. That nor I really does love. she want to be. Right. And that's fine. And yeah. I and I do like that she gets to be she gets to need accommodations, but we don't make a huge deal out of it. Right. Like, I don't know why everybody doesn't use a saddle. That sounds super Sounds practical. like it makes a lot more fucking why? sense when you're riding on a dragon for 12 hours at a time. Yeah, it's like the dragons won't let them use saddles. But it feels like the dragons will let them kill them, so I feel like maybe we could compromise on the saddles. Right, I don't know. right. Um, and I really like that we include all of that without making it into this huge... Nobody ever ribs her about the saddle. Yeah. Nobody's ever like, oh, you're in the fucking saddle again? Ever. Yeah, they're and, just oh, like you're tied down. They're just like, oh, you got your dragon to wear a saddle. That's fucking. That's amazing. Yeah, I would. They would do really well with saddles. Yeah, yeah. So I did like that. Yeah. So in terms of representation for, you know, not being the strongest or the most abled of everybody in the group, you still get to be as relevant, as important, and as powerful as everybody else. Yeah. Okay. See, I found something. Yeah, you great. You did great. Thank you. What about Good job. you, Anna? I liked, um, I liked whenever, and I love Violet, you know, I love her character. She was very annoying to me in this book, but I do like how she was proven wrong about people a few times. So we have Zayden's ex-girlfriend. Kat. Kat. I was going to say, we hadn't mentioned Kat. You know, that's, she's not like a huge deal, but actually... Her character is pretty cool because she wasn't after it wasn't petty over the dude. It's like she, she yeah, she had to learn. Yeah. She had to learn where people are coming from, and she had to learn it, everything is not just you know surface value. There's right. other things going on that yeah. your little brain may have not thought of. Everybody has secrets. Um, yeah, you know she the gets world is she forgives Dane. Yeah. You know, she forgives well, Dane and yeah. they oh, that's a their huge relationship thing. moves yeah. on. Like, I, I appreciated those. I appreciated the yeah. move with Dane really fast because I love how much hate he got in the first book because yeah. of the residual of the other story. Um, and that we got a switch and he's more like a Kale. Yeah. 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 He's like, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's I just like, chose the I wrong... didn't know. And, I, and, and there's power in that resolution. Yeah. It's the nobleness. I you know? get. I get that. Yeah. I get the feeling Stubborn of to the I point. must follow the rules. The rules are what is right. I have to do what is right. Yeah. And then, like getting so in that little train of thought that you cannot see anything else. Right. I get that. And then when you realize that maybe the rules were wrong, yeah. That being forced to live outside that—that's a really big deal for yeah for Dane. Yeah. yeah. And I I think. I liked that pivot a lot. I was like, I don't have the energy 
to keep up my dislike for Dane, there mm-hmm. are way bigger things happening right. here. Yeah. Who and, is the enemy? And that's what this is really all about, is yeah. identifying and, and the true the enemy. And is some peace? Yeah. Right. And a society that isn't focused on this m- constant war? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? So I is that where we're going? I don't know. I don't know. Because we'll we're out. moving really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I agree. I think I liked the cat story. I, I know a lot of people were like, oh. I think seeing a, a female character who is, she is more worried about the power. She yeah. was promised to be a leader of a country. She has been raised to do that. Which we and don't in see the blink, in female characters a lot. And in a blink of an eye. It's taken away because Zayden has actually fallen in love. You know, and I love that he said, <laughs> and he never, I never, he says, he's like, I never went down on her. He's like, <laughs> Damn. like that's how he, that's, that's what he says. Yeah. He's like, I mean, I, we were together, but I never did that. And yeah. she's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Special. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> on the throne, though, like on the Ooh. throne, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, that was a good scene. Yeah, it was a great scene, and and that was nice. I mean, we got I think we got like two scenes that were the spice is good. I mean, she's really good at creating that tension. Mm-hmm. That's one of her strengths. That's what she's done in other books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I really hope that it comes together, and and I hope the third book is like, phenomenal. At, yes. Yeah. And that's there's so much potential. Slow down. You know how much money you're gonna make. You don't have to put out a book two books a year. Mm-mm. And no. authors that are fucking crushing it. I mean, unless except for Brandon Sanderson, who's That's like totally different writing while he's sleeping. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, this isn't the first time we've encountered this because we read Ashes of the Star Curse. No, we read. Oh, Chris is Broadbent. Yeah, Chris mm-hmm. Broadbent. That got way bigger than they expected it to be. And then she well. she popped the second one out, just like bam. It shouldn't have been a duology. And it no. Yeah. That's the same thing that happened. Was like no. Nope, exactly. It needed an editor. It needed time. It yeah. just needed time to cook. Right. It had a lot of great ideas. A lot of cool stuff could have happened, but it just didn't have time to cook. Yeah. And with the love and the fan base that this story has now, like you are in the big leads leagues, my friend. Mm-hmm. No one expected you are in the big leagues. And this is a book that is like you, you got to take. Yeah. Let it cook. Let it cook. Yeah, it has. It really, really needs it. And the fan base is strong. We're not fickle. We'll wait. <gasps> oh, I love that reference. Because you remember, so many people clinged. That was one of the lines from this book in a minute. Because the point of that fucking line, when Zayden's like, how long it will take, how long will you fall out of love? With um, yes. When he's so worried about telling her because he's intrinsic. Which in my mind, I'm like, that's not that big of a deal. Like, you can share. I mean, but I understand, like, people die for that. Right. right, but people right. also die for being a traitor. People die for um, literally falling off a parapet. Yeah, just... that's what I didn't get. Like, if the stakes are always so high, there's no. Why is that the thing you don't want to share? Because yeah. you think she's not going to believe that you didn't read her intentions. That's way cool power. Way cool. He can't manipulate intentions. Right. Exactly. But that's why he can get in people's brains. I love that he can do that. It makes him an incredible leader. Like, if you can immediately tell if someone's motivations are true or not. Um, But he says in a minute, that's how long it's going to take. And But the point of it is she says, my love is not fickle. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Like, yeah. she has grown. Yeah. She's stubborn as fuck. Thank so, Rebecca God. Yaros, our love is not, not fickle. fickle. Mm-hmm. Take your time. We're allowed to feel <laughs> like you need some time. Yep. Yeah. Get some therapy. Learn how to deal with the scrutiny and the popularity and the fame. Yeah, that's Because I feel rough. like that's hard. That's it's hard for hard. anyone. It's, I can't never know. No, thank you. Can you imagine being Taylor Swift? No. 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 Poor girl. She's doing such a good job. Um, do you want to talk about the um, authors who are bombing other authors? Well, we don't have to talk about it in this one. I was just saying, going to say maybe that there's a lot of kind of upheaval. I see a lot of upheaval in kind of the book world, like the book talk, bookstagram. Sure. I think because there's such an influx of people. Yeah. And so you're bringing... We're like the Star Wars fandom. We're just getting so fucking big. It gets too big. And then you're bringing in like 
uh, people that are not a good culture fit, like yeah. for what else, for what's really going on. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then you get these authors that they want to be the next Rebecca Yaros. They're not. You're reminded that not every author is trying to put out a product because they believe in what they're putting out. They're putting something out that like, I want to make it big. Right. And I think if I can follow the formula, I can make it big. Yeah. And then we just had a thing where there was a lady who already had a traditional publishing deal, was already tracked to be very successful. And had she a started, book that a lot of people pre-ordered. And she went on and make, made a bunch of fake accounts and was review bombing other authors. And a lot of them were people of color. <gasps> just who were all going to be released around the same time as her just to torpedo their releases to uplift push, her own. push herself up i don't know what in what world that feels like it'll be successful it's i, I mean if there are if they i mean i don't know i don't read the books based on how many people say they're good or not? I read. There's them. a lot of people that do. Oh, There's okay. a lot of people that go on. Oh, this has only got and stuff like on Amazon, which your star rating affects where you show up. And if you fall before, below three point five, you drop off all the lists. Oh. You don't show up in searches. You don't oh. show up on lists. Wow. You completely wow. drop off. Wow. Okay. So if you can get a book so down low enough, is actually extremely harmful. Okay, so it's yeah. it's it's very harmful. So I just bring this up because I'm trying to plug in all, all of our podcasts. Right. There is an alternative to Goodreads that is female and person of color owned, and it is called Storygraph. Storygraph. And if you are big on Goodreads already and you have a ton of stuff you don't want to lose, you can export all of your Goodread data and import it into Storygraph. Okay. Sweet. So you don't even have to lose it. And you can add stars if you want to, which they go all the way into like quarters. You can do like three and a quarter, three and a half. That's great. I mean, that gives people some room. I wish that they had more than one star scale for each book. But they also do like, is it fast paced? Is it medium paced? Is it slow paced? Was it character driven? Was it not character driven? Were flaws the focus or was something else the focus? There's like a questionnaire you can fill out. Right. And the more people that do that for the book the more like accurate that data gets. Mm -hmm. And then you can go on and search. Like I can add to this book. I could add like slow burn romance. I could add like a comma separated list. And then if somebody else likes something similar to what I like, they could search it and that would show up by those tags. Cool. So people can add tags. Authors can add tags. It's an extremely granular way of doing it. I love that. And It's just a better way of looking at it. It's not like, oh, this was five stars. It's like, no, I like fast paced, low, like I like fast paced. You like low stakes. I mean, you can, you're good with a low stakes. I've just started to appreciate a Hallmark movie for the first time. Yeah. Probably because of Morning Glory Milking Farm. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Just like the low stakes. Like I finally understand why my mom loves watching all these movies. It's because they're cozy as hell. They're cozy and It's not stressful. And it's fine. And you can be like, was prose the focus? Was action the focus? Right. And that's all on there. And once I've added enough books and I've given it that much data, it will tailor make my recommendations for me. Nice. And be like, oh, you, well, you know, when you're in this mood, like, what mood are you in? Okay, here's the types of books that you tend to read when That's you're really in that cool. mood. Here you go. That's really cool. Tell us the name of it again. Story Graph. The Story Graph. And there's okay. an app and everything. I think I've seen some TikToks for that. I'll, I'll go double check. I'm Matt excited about to, that. He listened to a really good talk with the lady who developed it. Nice. And she was just like, there's got to be more than just like, especially now where you're getting this influx of people coming in. Mm-hmm. Amazon allows what are called drive-by reviews where you just run up, give a one-star review and leave. You don't have to buy the book. You don't have to prove you've read the book. You don't have to add text. Nothing. You wow. can just go to the book, leave a one-star review and nothing. And the author wow. has no way of getting rid of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so th- in, in that way, there's no way of genuinely knowing if they've been correct. Yeah. 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 I'm watching the book talk. You can tell when something's getting big, how big by how much negativity there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Also watching all of the Akatar, like that's a, to me, that's a good spectrum because it's a very, it's in the pop culture. Yeah. It's to the point where like male influencers are reading it to be relevant to this group of people. Yeah. Right. They're like, oh, book talk women or book talk people. Um, We know if we read this book, we're going to get them. So now we have an opinion on this. Right. Which I roll my eyes at and then I'm like, nope. Because if I liked sports, I would want to have a say in sports. Yeah. So if these guys, 
I'm like, stop talking about it. You don't even know. You just read the don't first book. Know. You don't know. Shut up. <laughs> Low frequency as fuck. But I don't actually put that on the internet. <laughs> right. That's okay. If you shut in your up. Heart of hearts. <laughs> you shut up. You don't get to talk about this. You don't know. You just read the first book and you had nothing but n- mean things to say. Don't talk about my Sarah that way. Don't talk about her. What? Who, who gave you a seat at this table? Yeah. <laughs> it's TikTok. Who invited you to the party? No one. But no one. Yeah, I get it. I, I get it. But I'm watching the posts go from. You know, it used to be like 100,000 likes, and now it'll be like 400,000 likes. Those are the kind of numbers you see for Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as – and you can – if you're paying attention to those kind of statistics, like you are seeing this fan base get to the point where I'm not rushing an Akatar show anymore. Mm -mm. Whoever can do it, they're in casting. Whoever can do it, whoever can make it the best – Take your sweet ass time. Yeah. Because yep. I would rather you not fuck this up. Yeah. Please because it will do not fuck this up. If it's fucked up. Yeah. And that's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure. It isn't fourth wing. Like I think that fourth wing could be like a CW show and people would still like it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we've seen happen it feels with, like with a things CW like show. Like yeah. supernatural. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. But like divergent. You know? Okay, yeah. That was Twilight. Like, what are other fantasy series that we've seen turned that didn't make it out alive? Maze Runner. Maze Runner. Uh, the Shadow Hunters, which was a great book series. And I read every one of those by Cassandra Clare. Mm-hmm. That was a really good series. And it was young adult. I mean, it was like they were like younger. There was no spice. Um, that was a great series that could have gone. They made a movie. Didn't do well. They turned it into a show. I don't know how long it lasted. Mm. Um you know, but the like magicians, that was great. That I loved the first season. I loved the books. So I and they and didn't, the first season was amazing for me. Yeah, and my sister loved all. of I them. mean, the magicians. I did not the show. I I think I watched all the way up until the last season because once they yeah all the way up until the I last just, season, that was a great show. Once it gets too far away from the books. It's hard. I lose. Well, and I don't think that Miss Sarah Janet will let that happen because she Hope is not. an alien in real life. Yeah. <laughs> that, and like, I don't think. It I all think, comes down to their contract. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I hope she has a Taylor contract. I hope yeah. she does. I, I really hope that, you know, she's smart and I think she's, she has had a slow, steady She has had the career where it like slowly. That's because she was forging the trail. Correct. Yeah. And mm. like she she's had a slow steady rise, which I think has allowed her to acclimate really well. Mm-hmm. Um, her husband is always with her in interviews, so I think she has a really great support group. She is not paying attention to what Suzy Q on the street is saying, which I love yeah. because that kind of criticism can be really harmful and hurtful. Yeah. Um, I don't think that creative, truly creative people need to know. You you can't because Yeah. I you wouldn't internalize be able to. it no matter how hard yeah. it is not to. I know. That's what's been really hard about watching some when you love an artist and you love someone, watching them have to deal with the criticisms. It's, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think that I'm hoping that she made some really smart decisions when she sold that that property. I'm sure she did. Hopefully. She's got the money to do it. Dude, her, in the picture that they released, I think she's in her house. It's so fucking beautiful. I'm a girl. <laughs> That is the most beautiful home. I'm so happy for you. I know. She's got this like incredible artwork. I always like it when an author makes it. Yeah. Like you, yeah. Like, but then job. they're still so like grounded and down to earth. And I think you can only stay grounded and down to earth if you are a, 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 if your world is still small. Yeah. Like yes. Sanderson is around his family. He's a professor at Brigham Young. But like, you know what I mean? Like he's yeah. still so grounded. Mm-hmm. So he can like Taylor Swift, she can show up with her family everywhere. Like that's never going to wager. Like yeah. it seems to me that genuine success requires a support group that can handle the yeah, can keep you together. Yeah, yeah, and you have to have yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, it's growing. Book talk is getting really big, and then there's doing. You know, I saw someone the other day say it's really cringe when like there'll be like a handsome man. 
And then somebody in the comments will be like, book talk, are you here? Every single time, girl, I'm right there. I am there with you. And this woman was like, that is so cringe. And I was like, your fucking face is cringe. <laughs> and I genuinely think that. I hate cringe. I think hate. If, if you say. Deeply hate. The word cringe. You are cringe. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I think that if you think something's cringe, that's your fucking problem. Yeah, get, get the fuck out of here you, with And that. when you get older and you mature, like, you realize that thinking something is cringe, that is, like, your own shit. Yes. Yeah. Don't yuck a yum. Just get out. Like, don't yuck a you yum. don't like it, just stay away. It's like, why am I it's, 40 it's, and I'm finally getting li- tattoos? Because I live my whole life being like, oh, I don't want to be. I, I don't want so to be so stoked. To I will probably be. I, yeah, same. I don't. I will. Yeah, I feel yeah. you on tattoos. So I finally, later, I was, later life tattoos are the best because you come like eventually you're like you know what what is this what have I gotten by being palatable for all of these years? Yeah, why do you have to be palatable? Why do you have? To, why does anybody have to be palatable? And for who your parents? Right. So I mean, at a well, certain point, it's like know. I don't fuck your cringe. Yeah. Fuck your whatever. Fuck yeah. your oh you're the old goth at the concert. Well, fuck the, you. Be, like, I hope I am. Cringe is what <laughs> middle school kids do to each other. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. that cringe is what happens when you're emotionally immature and you can't stand someone like living their life. You can't just stand mm-hmm. somebody else's joy. If I'm not harming you with my joy, get the yeah. fuck out of my face. Yeah. For sure. Out. And I, that is definitely a maturity thing. And so when I see people talking about cringe, I'm like, oh, you're just really young. Okay, and that's 15, really- 14, 13. 20, yeah. I mean, yeah. they're like 25, yeah. 27, 28. Doesn't like, mean they're not 15 at heart. Yeah. I mean, it definitely is. Cringing at someone else's some, – at something that makes somebody else. And also, I don't think – if if you cringe, if you say, oh, that's cringe, that doesn't hurt my feelings. That tells me so much about you. You, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, I it's, had this guy, at, like, say something on TikTok one time. So weird when you make a TikTok and then some random man comes in and has something to say about it. Well, it was about – I used the, build, the beard filter. Oh, we talked about this before. Never mind. I think we've talked about this before. Yeah, he was just really strange. I mean, it's like I didn't even understand what he was talking about. Yeah, but he tried yeah. to use cringe as an insult, and I was like, "Oh, babe, I don't care." You, yeah, like cringe is on you. It ultimately just keeps you from finding your people. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you're like, I can't. I, you end up with the wrong people because you're like, yeah. well, I'm with you. You're editing yourself. Yeah. So you edit much. yourself. I have so many TikToks where I'm being hateful and hatery, and I never post them because. I don't want that out there. Yeah. Like I have moments and I have these low key responses to certain opinions. Opinions I don't like. Um, when people don't like Nesta. <laughs> <laughs> and they're wrong. And they're, <laughs> and they're so I wrong. I just don't think they understand that we weren't supposed to like her. You're not yeah. supposed to like Nesta. And I also think that they're the difference in the friend girl, the girlfriends that like, and if, if forgive me if I've said it before, but like you will have friends who don't like your boyfriend and they will straight up say i don't like your boyfriend i have i'm not listening to you talk about your boyfriend anymore and if you keep dating them i don't know if we can be friends because i don't like your choice and they lay it into stone right because in there i they just don't like i've had friends like that and they're great because they tell you the truth right Mm -hmm. but i'm the kind of friend that's like i can't make up your mind girl I'm sorry he keeps hurting you. I'm going to still be here, right? Like, that's just a different mindset. It's a different type of shakeup. Yeah. I'm an yeah. air sign with water. I don't going to make – I'm not going to make cho- choices for you. But then there are people that are good at making choices, and they they think your boyfriend is a fucking murderer and a psychopath, and they don't want you to be with them anymore. Yeah, you I know? appreciate that. Which I would just tell you that. I know. Yes, I, that you, actually you are, You actually are both sides of the coin. But – also, so sometimes there is a, per, you know, like, I don't know. I think I get it. It's okay to not like somebody and never forgive them. <laughs> Except for now, the hard Yeah. Yeah. Or. I, I mean, it's okay. It, I don't know. It depends. If you're talking about characters in a book. Yeah. I if you don't, don't like Nesta, you just haven't been on or maybe a you're, brutal, like, you personal, never, emotional journey you never been, yeah, maybe. Yeah, You've just never been there. All right, so I've, usually when we start talking about Sarah J. Mass, it's a good place to wrap it up. Yep. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, see ya. <laughs> Bye, friends. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Is it just me tuning in to hear these three chatting about fantasy and novels of the spicy variety? Not your average book club if you know.